The cry, there aren't enough EV public charges, is rapidly being replaced with, I've slashed the price of my charging and still my hubs are deserted. Will Instavolt now accept that the days of 87 pence per kilowatt are well and truly over? And when we ask what is most important, price or availability, we get a real shock answer that upsets the entire apple cart. I'm Dave, this is Dave Takes It On. If you'd like to support the channel, please consider becoming a member. Whether you prefer YouTube or Patreon, you'll get access to exclusive videos behind the scenes and uh, announcements for channel meetups. Prices start from as little as £1.99. Have a look in the description down below for more detail. When approaching Easter Bank holiday, on a recent trip to London, I was surprised to find that Tesla superchargers all seemed to be down in price. It was a pretty standard 33p off-peak and 43p peak. I was equally shocked to find that superchargers were rather busy, but nowhere near packed, and I found no queues at all. And I deliberately went to some of the busiest superchargers based on the comments I've received. But a far more shocking discovery was that while the superchargers are in constant use, the hubs run by others are rapidly falling out of popularity. And the brand new hub just installed by Instavolt in Winchester is in dire trouble despite a simply huge discount at peak times and a really low off-peak rate. So what's going on? Okay, let's start with our journey. We're up in the northwest, that's where we're based, and within 30 miles we have five Tesla superchargers, two that opened only recently, but that gives us a choice of 75 Tesla chargers. We seem to be overloaded. Well, for me, I charge at home, so I rarely use these. But it would be very relevant if I couldn't charge at home. Prices for Tesla EVs range between peak at the dearest time of day, 43p, and off-peak, 21p, the cheapest. Several are open to all CCS vehicles, just arrive and charge, no membership required. And those prices are higher. They vary between about 56p peak and 28p off-peak. These are not dear charges either way, there are plenty of them. Well, while the 7 people per kilowatt hour with Octopus off-peak at home that I get is clearly just a silly low figure, especially for those who can charge at home, 28 p at a public charge with any of the recent EVs, most of which manage about 4 miles per kilowatt hour, means those that can't charge at home can drive for around half the price of petrol. Let's say you live in the 16th floor of an apartment block. You charge off-peak at an open-to-all supercharger, no memberships, 28 pence per kilowatt hour. That means an average EV that does 4 miles per kilowatt hour will spend 7p per mile on electricity using a public charger. Now, with petrol, you'd have to be getting 85 miles per gallon regularly just to match that. So a litre of petrol costs around £1.32 at supermarkets, making a gallon cost almost exactly £6. If your car does 30 mile per gallon, that's 20 pence per mile. 40 mile per gallon is 15 pence a mile, and a 50 mile per gallon is 12 pence a mile. And for those crazies out there who claim they always get over 60 mile per gallon, you don't, by the way. Even that's only 10p a mile. The EV is still 30% per mile cheaper public charging. Now the Ice Brigade have this habit of claiming that we all charge at 85 pence per kilowatt hour. By the way, if anyone is doing that, then you're just doing it all wrong. Just keep watching a few more seconds, there's loads of advice, but even at 85 pence, it is almost exactly the same as a petrol car doing 30 miles to the gallon. So it's not exciting, but it's not ridiculous. EV public charging prices are now on the move and they're heading downwards. I predicted a price war over a year ago, and the signs at last are that we're about there. Ah, but hold on, you say. Osprey's just increased from 79 to 82p. instavolt has gone to 85p. Gridserve uh, increased from 79 to 85 So how can I say prices are going down? Well, Gridserve still offers 79p if you use their app. So use it. Instavolt offer a cheaper off-peak rate of 54 pence every night between 8pm and 7am. 
use that. Instavolt, Osprey, Sainsbury's, Mer, Shell Recharge, Iont, Charge Place, Scotland and Instavolt all offer discounts if you use a free-to-get Electroverse card. Well, a recent session at Osprey, for example, cost me £6.12 for 9.39 kilowatt hours. That's 65 pence a kilowatt hour. And Sainsbury's, it costs 66. Ionity, 65. And even Instavolt, normally 87, I only paid 78. All discounted just for using my free Electroverse card. It's free to get. It offers discounts at most participating charges. You don't even need to use Octopus as your home utility provider. But if you do, then you get even bigger discounts and you can charge the session to your home Octopus utility bill. Nobody should be paying list prices. An Electroverse card is the absolute minimum essential. Anyway, back to the hubs. On started, I began to monitor the existing EV charger hubs of all the brands to see what's happening, and the immediate standout exception was the brand new Instavolt hub with 44 bays at Winchester. We first came across mention of this in Preston while filming an Instavolt installation at night at a nearby Burger King car park. The installers were very chatty. They told us they were off to Winchester the next day to complete that installation. 44 bay sounds great, but back then it was 85p and I didn't think it made a lot of sense. Anyway, that's now opened. And the initial usage is, well, it's rather scary. Now, for you parents out there with school-aged kids, you must remember the fear and doubt when your kid asks to have a party. Ooh, will anyone turn up? What if nobody comes? Well, that's exactly what Instavolt must have gone through when their flagship hub at Winchester actually opened. Because for them, nobody did turn up. Even a few weeks later, and over this Easter Bank Holiday weekend, place is deserted. And that's caused an immediate reaction. They already have an off-peak rate overnight, it's just 54 pence, but things are so bad that they've now hacked that 87 pence down to 65p peak all day, and still the 54p off-peak. That's between 8pm and 7am. And it's still deserted. So checking other hubs, they operate like Banbury, they've got 32 chargers. Bodmin with 12 chargers, we find exactly the same. Nobody is using them. And especially as this is a bank holiday weekend with many people on the road, even those who can charge at home, on bank holidays you are more likely to be needing to top up somewhere out on public charges, but nothing at all. Nor at Banbury, nor at Bodmin. These charges are deserted, and that cannot be a pleasant experience for whoever decided they were needed and that they were the future. Now, to be fair, we need a comparison, so we're going back to Tesla superchargers, open to all. So, not just for Tesla EVs, these are the ones open to all, and they offer cheap rates to everyone. So, let's see what's happening at some of the larger locations. Trafford Park, currently 56p, is full with a short wait estimated at 10 minutes. Rugby services, half empty. Frankly services on the M6, 10 out of 16 available. Gloucester southbound, that one's full with a five minute wait. Cribs Causeway, Bristol, 4 out of 14 available. Stoke-on-Trent, 4 out of 14 available as well. The message is really clear. It is absolutely not lack of demand. It's lack of use. And there are not too many factors that would make some people avoid certain charges. Reliability is one, but they're all pretty much better than ever these days. Location could be a play. They're maybe in the wrong location, too far to be convenient. Price, obviously, is, I believe, the primary reason. At 87 pence, they're just far too dear. But it's surprising that even at 65p at Winchester, it is not enough to attract the sort of numbers they envisaged or indeed need to make it viable. Grid server faring little better. Their first hub, Braintree Essex, is on this bank holiday, 38 out of 46 charges available. Gatwick Airport, 24 out of 32 available. Lancaster on the M6 northbound, 17 out of 22, completely unused. So what's going on? Well, recently got back from the Everything Electric show down in London where we completed a huge amount of filming, but we also got to interview many CEOs 
and the CPOs to get some answers. Now, these are what we're going to be showing over the next few weeks, but the message was loud and clear that the national grid had massively hiked up prices, which accounted for the recent price rises, but the occupancy was down due to those higher prices. That's true double whammy. But some of those interviews did show that they have plans for how to tackle the issue. Grids have recently accepted an investment of half a billion pounds, and I am sure those investors are already starting to ask questions. Well, the main one being, did we invest in the wrong place or the wrong industry? Now, Donald Trump is much of the main cause, with massive uncertainty in the EV industry, but not for all, it seems. Tesla remains by far the largest seller of EVs in the UK, even today, and their superchargers are the most popular in the whole of the UK, both those dedicated to Teslas only and the ones that are open to all. The writing's on the wall, and for us, so is the start of a real in-depth investigation, and we're going to cover everything we've learned from our numerous e interviews and our findings out on the road. Spoiler alert! The initial takeaway is that the industry is in for a massive shock in the very near future. By the way, if you haven't subscribed, you may want to now so that you don't miss out. Thanks very much for watching. I'm Dave.